Hey gang, it's your old buddy Platt here. Today we're continuing on our wine series. We're also going to continue to talk about fortified wine. We're going to talk about port. Uh, port is Portuguese fortified wine made with uh, distilled grape spirit. Uh, some people refer to it as brandy, but it's not really the brandy we think of. Uh, the wine itself comes from the Douro Valley in northern uh, Portugal. Uh, it's one of the oldest regions of the world to be designated as a wine growing region, I think second or third oldest in the world. Uh, the term port comes from the Portuguese city of Porto, which is where the Douro River empties out into the Atlantic Ocean, and it was a major stop for the wine coming from the vineyards upriver and heading out, and thus the wine that got, to, got named after the city, Porto. Um, port, the term itself, is protected by the EU. In Europe, wherever you'll see bottles labeled in a specific way, and you won't see the term port used for any other things. Here in the U.S., the term is a little less regulated. Uh, you may see the term Porto, O Porto, Vino do Porto out there. So be careful to, to read the bottles. Um, again, if it's in a EU designated area that has an AOC, you will see the markings on that bottle. Um, there are port style wines produced in other regions of the world besides Portugal. Uh, Australia, France, Argentina, and even here in the U.S., we produce port-style wines. Um, how port-style wines are produced is that um, they will add what well, they refer to as agua denti, but it's fresh off the still grape spirit that hasn't been aged, and they will add that to the wine while it's fermenting. Now, and they'll usually do it early in the fermentation process. Now, what this does is a couple things. A, it boosts the alcohol in the wine, but that because that alcohol is boosted to a point where it ends up stopping fermentation, it'll end up killing off the yeast, and the yeast hasn't finished its job of fermenting, so it didn't get around to getting all those sugars, so there's going to be residual sweetness. Port wines tend to be sweet wines. Uh, and that is because, again, we're stopping the fermentation before it's complete. Um, there are uh, five main grapes used in the production of port. There's uh, Tinto Baraco, Tinta Coa, Tempranillo, uh, Chiriga Fonseca, Chiriga Nacional. Those are the five main grapes. There's up to a hundred different grapes that can be used, but those five grapes do the uh, bulk of the work. Um, there's three main styles of port. There's Ruby, Tawny, and Vintage. Uh, in the last few years, uh, people have created White and Rosé ports. Those are still fairly new, experimental, and uh, not much, don't make up much of the marketplace. Uh, Ruby is the least expensive, most produced style of port. Uh, the wine gets fortified and then th thrown into stainless steel containers and that keeps it from oxidizing, so it maintains a bright red color. Um, it also gets fined and cold filtered, so it's a bright red wine, uh, doesn't get much exposure to wood. There are some rubies that do get uh, a little bit of aging, but for the most part, it's in contact with stainless and doesn't oxidize. Uh, tawny ports do spend some time in wood, and because of that, they do oxidize a little, and that will cause a brownish color. Uh, tawnies can be anywhere from sweet to semi-dry, because of that interaction with the wood. Gets a little bit of a nutty flavor. And then last but not least is vintage port. Vintage port is comes from wine that's produced in years that are deemed worthy of a vintage notation. Unlike some table wines, you know, these companies will always have a 2010, 2011, 2012. The AOC, or the governing body there in Portugal, will decide whether or not a certain year was worthy of the vintage denotation. And then uh, that wine then will get, can be aged up to two and a half years in wood, and they will spend anywhere from 10 to 40 years in the bottle. 
and uh, it will be denoted by that vintage year. Uh, vintage ports only make about 2% of production, so they're a very small part, very rare. If you get a chance, definitely try one. Um, the one we're going to try today is the Sanamon's Fine Tony Port. 19.5% uh, alcohol by volume, so uh, be careful with these. These are sippers. These are not <laughs> slammers. Um, the company itself was founded by Scotsman George Sandeman in 1790. The 25-year-old got a $300 loan to start the company. And the rest, they say, is history. So, let's give this a try. All right, I get almost Merlot or, or Pinot Noir color, but there's a little hint of brown in it. So, uh, again, probably a little bit of that oxidation. Boy, sweet on the nose. I can already tell that. Ooh, that is nice. Real sweet. I get a little bit of wood. Um, I'm not sure I'm picking up nuttiness, but there's complexity to it. Uh, the viscosity is higher in this. You definitely get that residual sugar. There's there's a thickness to this. Um, also, go at 19.5% alcohol. I get that little warming. Uh, feeling uh, great for this time of year, kind of a winter warmer. Nice amount of fruit. Um, almost get almost like a brown sugar kind of vibe to this. Overall, overall, real nice. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Also, please like the video. let YouTube know we're putting out good content. Well, until next time, bottoms up.